I'm about to answer an internet burning question. What is better between the Xbox Series X and the PS5? Okay, I've owned a PS5 for like a year now and I've owned an Xbox Series X for about two or three weeks now. Having gotten to experience them both a good amount, I think I can answer the question. Both of them are good. But if I had to pick one or I had to tell someone to wait and put their money towards one, PlayStation, definitely. Faster, smoother. Xbox Series X still has a ton of loading screens in their games. And getting in and out of online matchmaking doesn't seem any faster than it was on the old gen. PS5 is nearly instant. Now, I will say, Halo is fantastic, though. One of the funnest campaigns I've played in recent times, and the Xbox is definitely worth getting if your friends all have it like mine. But if you're just wanting to get one next-gen console, think PlayStation's the way to go. Alright, what is going on guys, and welcome back to Wyatt's Pick'em Wednesday's Week 17 Edition. Crazy, it should be the last week, but it's not. Kind of unfortunately, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting kinda tired of these, but we've only got two full weeks left, so we can tough it out. Not tired of recording these, I'm tired of editing. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but it's just so much copy, paste, cut, and drag. Ugh. Before we hop into the video, head over to gfuel.com, use code Wyatt's World, save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products. Alright, on to the video. Alright, so starting off with Sunday because we do not have a Thursday game. It is Atlanta in Buffalo. Trap game alert. Don't sweat it. Give it your all. You gotta play it like it matters because it does. Fortunately, I think the secondary has really stepped up without Trey White and I expect Josh to continue his MVP campaign at home in front of the crowd. If they can beat New England in Foxborough, they can certainly beat Atlanta at home. However, I will say I'm excited to see Kyle Pitts. I just hope he doesn't tear us up too bad. I got Buffalo winning 28-17. Next game we got is the Giants at Chicago. Ugh. This game is gonna be boring. I hate both these teams. Both these teams suck. But the Giants suck worse. 20-7 to Chicago. Chicago's D, like I always say, isn't terrible. And they shouldn't be too exhausted because they don't have a lot to stop. Daniel Jones shut down for the season. Mike Glennon is fucking horrible. And Jake Fromm is terrible as well. Next game. All right, and up next, we've got Kansas City at Cincinnati. Man, if Buffalo didn't play at noon, I would definitely be all eyes on this. It's gonna be a fun game. It's gonna be a high-scoring game. It's gonna be an electric game. But unfortunately, Kansas City, like I've been saying, is Kansas City. This is where they go. This is where they shine. They've been red hot. They're gonna be red hot. Hope I'm wrong, but Kansas City is gonna win 38-31 to with a last-second touchdown. Moving on, we've got Miami at the Titans. Look, the Dolphins have had a good run, and they have beaten, like, the Ravens, but other than that, I don't think they've beaten a team that's really been, you know, good. So this will be a test for them. I do think that the Titans will win as well. However, that's going to involve Tannehill and A.J. Brown getting around the secondary of Miami. Rabel is focused on first. He knows he can't afford to lose. Indy is right there with him. It's a must win for both teams, but the Titans, this is a statement win. Miami's got credibility, and the Titans are going to dethrone them 24 to 20. Hell of a win streak, though. Moving on to the next game, we've got Vegas at Indy. They're not stopping Jonathan Taylor, absolutely not. No disrespect, no disrespect at all, but just no. Look, like John Cena said to Roman Reigns in an interview, in this world, anybody can step up, but very few can keep up. When it comes to Jonathan Taylor, there's nobody at his pace. He will beat the Raiders down and afterwards whip out a holy Bible and hold Sunday Mass at Lucas Oil Stadium. Jonathan Taylor is going to rush for 364 yards and six touchdowns. Indy wins 56-21. Moving on, we got the Jags at New England. I uh, No James, which definitely doesn't help the Jags, but it's a rookie quarterback against Bill Belichick. I, the only thing worse that could possibly happen is if Trevor Lawrence just went to Bill Belichick's house and slapped his wife across the face. Like, they don't stand a chance to begin with. 30-9 New England. Whether Mac Jones is throwing it or Damian Harris is running it, I don't know. I don't expect it to be competitive. And it sucks because I think New England's last week is a bad team too. Moving on, we've got the coin flip of the week. Carolina at New Orleans. I don't know. New Orleans has been doing this all year. They'll go out and they'll look good, and then the next week they'll look just like the worst team on planet Earth. All right, I guess we've got the coin flipper. Apparently, global flips. 16,021,867. Good gosh. Panthers will be heads. Saints will be tails because tails is the closest thing to an asshole. Who's winning? Are you fucking serious? You know we gotta do two out of three. Come on, heads. Come on, heads. God damn it, son of a 
Saints win. Moving on, we've got Tampa Bay at the Jets. Uh, another game that I just don't have any interest in because it's just going to be an absolute beating. You guys want to see a cool card I pulled? A serial number Najee Harris rookie out of 249. Oh yeah, also I got a uh, Deontay Johnson autograph. That's sick. Uh, Tampa Bay wins 40 to nothing. Moving on, we've got Philly at Washington. Look, I'm not rooting for Philly, I'm rooting for Jalen Hurts. It's gonna be an entertaining game, but Philly is going to win 31 to 27. Eagles are weirdly explosive. They'll just take off out of nowhere and they'll start generating points and a lot of them. I just wanna know what they would look like if Jalen actually had a good receiving core. And no, don't hit me with the comments. They do have a good one. Jalen Rager sucks. Quez Watkins isn't gonna be your guy. He's good for catching a bomb, but he doesn't score. Who else you got? Arcega Whiteside and Greg Ward? Get the fuck out of here. Outside of Devontae Smith, who is good? You guys need wide receivers, and you could have Justin Jefferson and DK Metcalf alongside him, but you don't. <laughs> Moving on, we've got Denver at the Chargers. Chargers 17 to 14. Denver's gonna play you tough no matter what, but the Chargers need this win and I want them to win. Last week was a trap game. I don't know what the hell else to tell you. It happened with Buffalo and Jacksonville. This is a new week. Focus on the run game. Derwin James will take care of the rest. By the way, I'm just throwing this out there. If Denver does win, am I gonna be shocked? No, not at all. They're a good team. Moving on, we've got Houston at San Fran. San Francisco, 31 to 10. Another explosive offense against a horseshit team. No, I don't think Houston's any better. I know, I always say that. Now they'll probably go out and just wax them. But look, if Davis Mills can go out there and pick apart the 49ers, I'll be a believer. I just don't see that happening at all. I think there's a better chance at Brett Favre returning to the league tomorrow. Moving on, we've got Arizona at Dallas. I didn't know that Arizona had to face Dallas this week because that sucks. I'm picking Dallas. Dallas is a better team and Arizona just hasn't been good. I mean, Kyler is really going to have to ball out if they want to win this. And the best strategy I have for Arizona is just to put pressure on Dak because that is his target. You hit it enough, he will fold. But Dallas is still going to score. And for Kyler Murray to go off, it's going to be extra difficult because Dallas has two of the best playmakers in the league. Oh, it's a disaster for Arizona. I can't choose them. Dallas wins 28-23. Moving on, we've got Detroit at Seattle. Lions, 21 to 20. Why the hell not? Told you guys, I'm gonna ride with the Lions and they can easily win this. The Seahawks are not that good. Come on, Dan Campbell. By the way, I made a TikTok about it yesterday. I probably won't put it on YouTube because it's like a 10 second video, but somebody asked me where I think Russ is gonna go. Washington, because that's where I want him to go. Yes, I think he's 100% out of Seattle. Moving on, we've got the Rams at Baltimore. Rams 34-21. I don't know Lamar's status, but I got the Rams winning because they're a better team, and I got Stafford just hammering Cooper Cup all game because they're going to want to pad the stats for that record. I don't know if he's broken it already or if he's about to, but I know he can do touchdowns, yards, and probably something else. Two games left on a historic season for them both. Baltimore might miss the playoffs this year. I think they're in big jeopardy already. Moving on to Sunday Night Football, we've got Minnesota at Green Bay. I'm going to pick Green Bay, but I'm not going to be shocked if Minnesota wins. This would be the most Vikings thing ever. Might be snowy, probably going to be really cold, but it's one of the greatest rivalries in sports, and no matter how terrible the Vikings roster is, they always seem to play them well. Really sucks that I think Adam Thielen re-injured himself for like a multiple week thing, but even with him, I just still wouldn't have the balls to actually pick Minnesota to beat Green Bay in Lambeau. It's going to be a close game because, you know, it's the Vikings, so I got Green Bay winning 20 eight to 26. And finally, we got Monday Night Football. It is Cleveland at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh will win to keep it interesting, and the Browns are just bad. 14 to 10, low-scoring defensive battle. It's going to be a lot of young pressure for Big Ben to deal with, and Baker just likes to throw interceptions for fun. I'm sure it'll get down to the fourth quarter, and there'll be a questionable call, and then the fans will get on Twitter, even if you guys truly do get fucked over. I don't care. You guys should be so much better than you are, and you're just not. Tell you what, the four touchdowns OBJ's already gotten, you guys could definitely use. All right, guys, and that is going to be all for my week 17 predictions. Let me know what you did. Let me know what you didn't agree with. If you guys like this video, you already know what to do. Comment, like, subscribe, turn your bell on. I do my absolute best to post every single day. If you live in Minnesota, stay warm, stay inside. Don't get frostbite. It is dangerously cold outside right now. With that stuff being said, I'm going to hop off and get this shit edited so you guys can hopefully watch it on time. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your Wednesday. And as always, I will see you in the next video.